Jimmy. So uh, on to some new news. Uh, some another another news is uh, basically um, there's like this rumor um, that uh, what is the guy's name? Jeff Dave, David Jaffe. David Jaffe, the guy has uh, kind of started, and he basically said that um, Sony PlayStation has uh, something that will basically counteract what Game Pass has got going on right now. So. There could possibly be some type of a, a service that uh, Sony offers later on, in, you know, sometime in the future, where you'd be able to get a whole access to a whole bunch of games for uh, a small fee, maybe something a little bit more than uh, what we pay for PS Plus yearly, and you know, and be able to have access to some great ass games without you know having to do too yeah, much. Yeah, like, and that would be interesting. So yeah, David Jaffe, which guy I reference him a lot because I do like his content and I like right. his take on things because he's one of the greatest game developers ever. He he made the original God of War, the original Twisted Metal. That's all from his mind. <laughs> so like he's really great at what he does. Um, he's a little bit eccentric of a guy, but uh, I really like him. And he let it know on one of his streams that uh, Sony has let him know that a counterpunch, they have a counterpunch for Game Pass. Mm-hmm. He admits he doesn't know what it, what form it will take, when it will be announced, but he says supposedly they do. My, my, uh, I guess my rumor, not rumor, my, uh, your thoughts? Yeah, my, just my, uh, I guess stab at the dark. I have no idea what to call it because I have yes. no, I have no way to prove that this is true. Yeah. But I think it might be like a timed exclusive kind of thing. Like you can pay a monthly fee. And they'll give you access to like all their like older first party exclusives and you'll get new ones as well. But I think there'll be like a, a window, like a three month wait, like maybe like after three months, then I'll get added to this service hmm. and you'll have it in your subscription. I can see that happening. That wouldn't be a counter punch to uh, that wouldn't be like an effective counter to Game Pass, though. It would be nice, but it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be on so if you had Game every Pass. single Game Pass is giving you day one. So right, games. but I can't ever see. This is why I don't think that's. So, you don't think it'd be worth it? Like you had a subscription to let's say, uh, PlayStation Pass, uh-huh. right? And uh, it's basically you have every you have access to every single Sony first party exclusive, every one of them. Uh-huh. So all the ones that have been existed, Last of Us Two, everything that's been out, everything I've already played, yeah. Everything you've already played, but a lot of people might have not played it. Right. And Forbidden West comes out February. You don't. It's it's not worth it to you to just wait three months and get it for free on PlayStation Pass. So, if I was me before the podcast, then yes, it would have been very beneficial because I'll wait. But if I know, we're sitting, I'm here asking you to- as consumer Joe. Don't you don't have a show to you know, feed content to, Uh and you're just like an average consumer. Right. I think that would be a good counterpunch. I'm paying 10 bucks for my Game Pass, and I'm paying 10, 15 bucks for my PlayStation Plus, and I have all the games now. Yeah, it would be a decent one, but when you're still looking at everything that Xbox will presumably put out, Xbox themselves will put out, will be day one on Game Pass. So it's all there for free early like you know as soon as it comes out right but you've got to wait on playstation it's kind of like it's like damn why i gotta wait three months you know no, it's I mean? definitely like, why is xbox able to do it day one but i gotta wait three months for PlayStation. it's definitely a hand be down version of game pass yeah but this is why i think it's different and why it's not quite the same why you think it's up to par yes okay to game pass even though you're waiting three months mm-hmm. because in my honest opinion I don't think Xbox is putting as much heart, soul, effort, money, and time into making their first party games like Sony does. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just apparent in the quality that you see. They are not making Miles Morales. Microsoft has never made a game anywhere near as good as that. Maybe Ori and mm-hmm. the Blind Forest is like the most beautiful game they've made. They're not making Uncharted. They aren't making Ratchet and Clanks. Like Sony is a whole other level of production. And that cost 
tons of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. I mm-hmm. bet you they put they put more than a hundred million. But you said into, so yourself that Microsoft got way more money than Sony. They do, but they're just not doing what Sony's doing. So they, why it just is can't that? be. I don't know why that is. I don't know if they're spending all their money. In my mind, I think they're spending a lot of their more of the competition. Yes. I think they're buying these Game Pass games, right? Like they're buying access to Outriders exclusivity on Game Pass, right? Like that's what they're spending their money. Sony's spending it in developing games. Microsoft is spending it in acquiring titles for their Game Pass system, like mm-hmm. Netflix would. Yeah. And just because Microsoft has, you know, seven billion in the bank doesn't mean that they're giving Xbox unlimited access to that. They have a budget, right? So I'm sure Phil Spencer has a limit and a budget, and he's doing all that he can with that. And I think he's choosing to spend his money in acquiring games that already exist rather than spending it in developing first-party games. And so because of that, Sony has to make their money back. I don't think they can do what Microsoft is doing. I don't think they can just give it to you for a subscription. I think Sony wants to do both. They want to make all the money they would normally make from launching their games like they normally do and have a subscription service to get it later. But in that same in that same respect, like... Don't you think eventually Xbox would catch up? Like, they've bought enough damn studios. Like, you don't think that, um, like, a Bethesda or an Obsidian or one of these other damn, uh, you know, developers that they've purchased could create, like, really good top-tier quality stuff? And then now you're getting that stuff for day one on Game Pass with your fee? Okay. As opposed to paying like, you know Bethesda's close. I don't think Obsidian has ever made a game that's as awesome as any of the really big Sony first party games has. Bethesda's close. Well, I mean Obsidian technically made uh Fallout New Vegas, right? Yeah, they made Fallout New Vegas and, that was and they made um the most recent the space one. Yeah, the uh, Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds, which those are good games. But is that... On the same tier Last as, of Us? Is that Naughty Dog? Is, is, is uh, that Miles Morales? Is that Ratchet and Clank? Is that God of War? I don't think it's on that level. You're talking about... Are you talking about, like, pr- production wise I'm talking about or? production, quality, all of it. Gameplay. I don't think it's on the same level as those Microsoft first-party studio games are. Hmm. Her, it's not as good as Forbidden West is going to be. Like, I don't think there's any way... The only one that they have that can maybe do that is Bethesda. They do put really good stuff out. You can't yeah. deny Skyrim's a masterpiece. You can't deny it. I'm just saying. But at the same, <clears throat> I kind of, I kind of feel like Obsidian and Bethesda are damn near on the, the same level in a sense because Bethesda, I think Bethesda is better than Obsidian. Obsidian was able to put out Outer Worlds, and you could say that Outer Worlds is literally like Fallout, but just in space. Like they're giving you like the same amount of gameplay right they're more like copycats though than like yeah copycats but i'm saying that the genius they're, they're able to give you what bethesda is giving you yeah they're like blue the box time. like blue box is really good at like <laughs> making games that already exist i don't even want to talk about blue box but yeah. <laughs> i know maybe we'll see that at revealed at the we don't know what event. they got yeah they ain't got i'm just shit saying right like i'm just saying obsidian any game that they made on their own uh-huh is not been like that level like, so they took Fallout's engine, they took Fallout's ideas, and they made New Vegas, right? right. And, like, it's good. I love New Vegas. Um, but they didn't make Skyrim. Like, they didn't create that whole lore, that whole world, that whole story, the whole concepts there. Like, Bethesda did that. Uh-huh. You know, like, I think Bethesda is top tier. Like, I don't know if Bethesda's, like, Naughty Dog level. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, I think Naughty Dog and Rockstar are the two greatest game developers on the planet, in my opinion. But let's say Microsoft someday spends $25 billion and buys Rockstar. I don't know, do what it would cost to buy Rockstar. Then you might have a studio that's, like, producing games. I don't know what third-party studios are out there for Microsoft to gobble up that match Sony's first-party studios. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I feel like it would to be counter the, what it would have saying. to be the effort, right? The effort and I know the, I don't the, know. Uh, Sony has a different. They do. They're different there, man. I mean, I I don't know. I f- maybe their engine. Like I mean, obviously Bethesda and uh, I guess rightfully so Obsidian isn't going to get to that level if they keep going on with their their proprietary engine because their engine is just subpar compared right. to like Unreal Engine. You yeah. know what I mean? We see what Unreal Engine Five can do alone. So I don't think it's touching, you know, what 
Miles Morales has been or what Horizon has been or God of War. Ratchet or, and Clank you know, is just Ratchet jaw-dropping. And Clank, you know yeah. what I mean? Because their engine, I think their engine is the limited Well, yeah, factor. and they build their own and they, they put all the effort into what they want it to be. And right. Naughty Dog does that too. It's their own engine. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a big, that's a big part of it. And that's what I'm but just saying. Uh, like, it goes back to my HBO versus cable thing. Like, right, right. I just don't think that sony can really afford like i don't think you know it's harder like hbo could never give away their shows for the same price that you know tnt does right like they could never do it um and so that's why my guess i don't know what the counterpunch is but my guess is it's going to be some delayed you know exclusivity Mm. like i think they make you wait a little while yeah, I could, I could, I understand what you're yeah. saying, and I could see where you're, you're, you're saying that, you know, because they're still gonna want their money, right, and whatnot. But at the same time, when you've got a lot of subscribers, and you're giving them access to this, I feel like you would still make quite a bit of your money, you know, because this is a monthly thing. You don't drop games every month, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So there's those stagnant months where there's not gonna be any new first party game title from Sony. And that's where they're going to make their money back. You know what I mean? Because people are still going to subscribe. You know, it's like, oh, five minute, you know, five month intervals or something like right. that between each new first party game to, to be put up on there. I think they would still get their money back, even if they had like their reduced numbers, you know, after the world's been opened up, you know, from COVID and stuff like that. Yeah, like, I think I think it would still counter it, like where they would still make a bit of money. But I, I mean, just think like they would do like. Um, as much as we see it's worth it playstation be greedy like like let's say they they released a game every two or three months because yeah they don't release a game very often but you're getting like four to five first party exclusives a year from sony Mm -hmm. and let's say you're paying 15 bucks a month like that's 180 dollars so far this year we've gotten well returnal now would be first party um ratchet and clank um bug snacks bug snacks wait bug snacks 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 doesn't count yeah um I mean, we were supposed to get Forbidden West this year and God of War this year. There were some games we were supposed to get this year that were not. Right. So I think this is an anomaly because of the COVID and we've had this conversation. Yeah. But I think generally speaking, you get about four to five um, Sony five exclusives Sony's. every year. Okay. And times that by 70 now, like that's like 350 bucks, you know? And so if you're paying 15 bucks a month, so like 180, you're getting, you're getting quite a bit of value for your money, even though you're waiting three months for like a game to come out, like right. you're saying. You're still getting quite a bit of value because you get it. You get you don't have to pay the seven dollar fee, right? So, but essentially, you would get less, right? You would if you're if you're dropping five games a year. Like, I mean, do you depending on when the games dropped? I guess maybe you see all five of those that year, but if not, you might. Yeah, I'm assuming you would see five year five games a year in a normal. Because if World it's five, year. if they wait in five months between each drop, and then when that drop happens, you gotta wait three months. Like your quality, your number of games is gonna dwindle down to like maybe three, no, out like of five or something. No, you might. The longest window you would wait, I think, is through the summer. Mm. But I think otherwise, every month or two, you'd be getting a game from Sony. Hmm. That's a first party game, I think. Okay. Um, I think it's it'd be worth it. Um, but yeah, but I yeah, mean, it's not quite Game Pass, but it'd be worth it, I think. Yeah, I mean, right now it is just a rumor. It's not. It's not factual. So you know, we have to wait, keep our ears open. You know, or like maybe like a Disney a Disney model. You know how they make you pay a premium to see like the brand new movie? Okay, Some of like them. half the price to yeah, get access to the game. Right. You pay like a third because you have your subscription, you have access to all their first party games. Mm-hmm. But then like you pay a third of the price of the game to get it day one because you're paying the subscription. Maybe something like that. That might not be that that might not be that bad. Yeah. If you're if you're looking at it as like it's a yearly thing, you know, like, you know how you pay, like, presumably 50 right. bucks for a year right. PS Plus. If I pay, like, 70 or 80 bucks, you know, a year for the PS Plus with access to the game. It's going to be more than and that. And then I yeah. pay, like, you know, I'm able to pay, like, $30 to get the game day one. That's not bad. because Yeah, I, I don't want to put a price on what they would charge. But right. I'm saying maybe they might do a model like that. Because Sony is like Disney in the sense where they have a lot of exclusive stuff Mm -hmm. like disney has so many movies that they can make their own movie service just with their own content and i think sony is similar like they can almost run a streaming service with just their own content they have so many games you know yeah so something along those lines i love gaming